The House of Representatives has called for more proactive steps from the security agencies towards addressing cases of banditry and kidnappings in parts of the country. This followed several motions of urgent public importance reported, reporting cases of insecurity in parts of Enugu, Kaduna and Abia states. Of security, Mr. Speaker, this might be the fourth time that we will be observing one minute silence this morning. If you recall, in our last meeting, we were almost tagging our country, one Nigerian life, one minute silence. It is not enough. The most quoted section of the Constitution on the floor of this House is Section 14.2. There is hardly any week we don't rely on Section 14.2, which has to do with security of lives and property. But what are we doing as a parliament? I think that we should look at all our resolutions that has to do with insecurity, all, all the resolutions, let us put them together and begin to ensure compliance with some of these resolutions. Because we arrive at resolutions day in, day out, and nothing happens. And to Nigerians, it is as if we are not doing anything or we don't really bother. I think that we have enforcement mechanism to some of our resolutions. Let us activate those enforcement mechanisms so that we begin to enforce resolutions. Speaker, honorable colleagues, riding on the position of the minority leader. Mr. Speaker, we have been saying on this floor of the House, in as much as substantial amount of money is not going to be allocated or will continue to be allocated to these security agencies, security in Nigeria will not and never come to an end. Mr. Speaker, between 2015 to 2023, more than 19 trillion naira was spent on security and security-related matters in Nigeria. Whereas, we have an alternative where we can bring in mercenaries. It was attempted during President Goodluck Jonathan. They were about to finish Boko Haram. And later on, the new president was convinced. I removed them out of the country, and the insecurity keep on escalating to northern Nigeria, particularly in the northern central part of the country, and to the northwest. Only God knows where it will sp uh, spread in the next few years, God forbid. Mr. Speaker, as you said, we are going to have a summit. Right. This House must have a position paper from constituents, particularly in the security-prone areas, on the issue of employing or bringing back mercenaries to finish security issues in this country so that investors can come in and invest. People can have time to go to their farms. That we observe a minute silence in, over, I mean, in honor of the deceased victims. Also urge the Inspector General of Police to urgently deploy more police officers to the area complement the ones on ground. Also urge the Nigerian police force and the Nigerian army as well as the Department of State Security Services to collaborate and ensure that the culprits involved are brought to book. Also urge the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, the National Emergency Agency, NEMA, to provide food and non-food items to the affected victims. In another development, the House of Representatives also mandated its committee on Navy to investigate the circumstances surrounding the death of one Richard Onumaibu, a civil servant in Abia State, after he was allegedly tortured by men of the Nigerian Navy over civil matters. Demonstrating unwavering commitment to his duties. Disturbed that on that fateful day, the fateful night of March 26, 2024, Mr. Onumebu was subjected to brutal torture for horrifying duration of five hours from 8 p.m. to 1 p.m. by five naval officers, reportedly summoned by an aggrieved lady who, has issue, who had issues with the deceased. This barbaric act not only robbed Mr. Onumebu of his life, but also tarnished the reputation 
of the Nigerian Navy and violated the fundamental human rights. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.